Welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association and Jesuit Education Tour Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Nashira and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash NCCAA. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University. All righty, <laughs> had to get everything up and going. Hello, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. I have a short amount of time, so I am going to breeze through all of this as quickly as possible and try not to try to make my normally 20 minute presentation six. And so our goal at Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University, I will often call it Fran U because that's how, what we call it here, um, is to help you thrive. And my presentation is not going forward, so here we go. Um, so we are the only Catholic Franciscan university located in the South. We're located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are very mission-centered, offering degree programs from health professions, behavioral and natural sciences, and humanities. And we have programs all the way from associates to doctoral level. And here's a quick look at our programs. Some of our well-known programs are our Bachelor of Science in Nursing. We did start as a nursing school in 1923, so we are coming up on our centennial in 2023, just a couple of years. We also offer uh, associates in physical therapy and radiologic technology and many other health sciences programs. Some of our newer programs that are doing very, very well are psychology and theology programs. So I mentioned that we are mission centered. Our mission at Fran U is to educate and form Franciscan servant leaders across all faiths. And the way we do that is by living out these core values, our core values of service, reverence and love for all life, joyfulness of spirit, humility and justice. These core values are founded on Franciscan principles. Um, service is seen through our service learning. Every um, student on campus is required to meet a certain number of community service hours depending on what program they're in and all of that starts in your theology class reverence and love for all life is something that we're able to embrace when we use our um, anatomage table and high fidelity simulations joyfulness of spirit is seen quite often when we have our organizations throwing events humility is something that um, I won't say we pride ourselves on because that's the opposite of humility, but our students are well known and um, often don't take all the credit that they should. And justice, we try to make sure that all of our, um, everyone is treated equally. We have an extremely diverse community. And so we wanna make sure that everyone um, has the fair opportunities here at Brand New. So here are some quick facts. We do have 10,000 square feet of space for simulation practice, 100% pass rates in our medical lab science, nursing, family nurse practitioner, and a phys physician assistant studies. This means that when you graduate with us, you are most likely going to pass those tests that are required. We are a one of the only recipients in this area of the Nightingale Award, I think one of two universities in Louisiana. And that comes from our nearly 20,000 community service hours. And we do offer clinical guaranteed admissions opportunities. So all of our health science programs, our, our health programs, um, our two-step process, you apply to the university and then you apply to clinicals. And if you come directly into our university, there are some ways that you can get those guaranteed admissions and automatically go into your clinicals. So we do believe that this is a place for excellence. We have an intimate family-like community 
on average a 30 to one student per to professor ratio. I know a lot of smaller private universities will mention that as well because that is just such a blessing to have. One of our students mentioned that to her that means that when she turns off her Zoom camera that her professor still recognizes her voice. And I just think that's very telling of how willing our professors are to get to know you. Again, we're focused on engaged learning. So getting able to being able to have a lot of hands on time um, in both a clinical environment and a collaborative and safe environment. We have the emphasis on service, which I've touched about a tutoring and writing center, which are opportunities to all of our students on campus. And we are one of the most affordable private institutions in this area. So when we talk about engaged learning, we are often talking about our simulated environment teaching hospital. We, we fondly call it Seth. And in Seth, we have over 20 high fidelity mannequins. One that we like to point out quite often is Victoria down here in the bottom left. She can give a full birth, C-section, vaginal. Um, most, most of our students really love Victoria. Um, we also have that respiratory program and down in the bottom right, you can see someone intubating. Inside of Seth, we have our anatomage table. And this is how, this is one of the ways that we um, have that reverence and love for all life. Rather than having to cut into multiple cadavers, we have four cadavers loaded onto the anatomage table. And this is basically a giant iPad. You're able to zoom in and out. Um, you can highlight specific parts of the body. And our students learn a lot uh, in anatomy and physiology using this table. For service, we have quite a few opportunities. Um, our service learning groups get together and programs help each other decide how they're going to meet their goals each um, semester. Uh, we, we have our campus ministry up here in the top left who gave over uh, $1,200, I believe, to a local area family justice center. And we have our sister here in the bottom middle. She started a uh, mission over in Haiti. We do have professional student organizations, campus ministry organizations, and here's a look at some of the fun stuff that they do. We have a turkey bowl each year, uh, crawfish boil, which if you're from the north, you probably call it crayfish, which is wrong, but that's okay, we forgive you. Um, and we have our Oktoberfest every year as well. And we have lots of research opportunities. A quick look at those guaranteed admissions, like I mentioned, if you're a freshman incoming, you have these opportunities for nursing, rad tech, respiratory therapy, and physical therapy assistant. If you transfer to us, I would, I would email us because it's a little bit of a different process. And if you're looking to apply, we have our fall semester application deadline is July 1st for next year. All of our applications for next year are already open. Um, we do have scholarships and financial aid available, and we do accept private scholarships as well. We have our open house coming up, so I had to throw this on here. It is this Saturday. I know a lot of you are from north of, way north of Louisiana, but if you're not, definitely come by and see us. Um, or if you just want to fly down to Louisiana, we'd be happy to have you. So I will drop in the chat a link to apply and a link to our open house. And I apologize if I went a few seconds over, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Fran. You uh, will now have Manor College. Hello, guys. So I'm going to turn on um, screen sharing for a second. So please bear with me. All right, guys, so we're Manor College. We're actually located in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, which is about 30 minutes away from downtown Philadelphia. If you're like me and you're from Northeast Philadelphia, it's actually about 10 minutes away from you guys. Um, so we are founded in 1947 by the Byzantine Ukrainian Sisters of St. Basil the Great, who is also our patron saint. And we definitely try to go by that in giving students personalized education. Our undergraduate enrollment is a little bit about 850 students. So we are a small school. We are mainly female, but we also do have 43 countries represented. We actually recently had a lot of students come over from Haiti 
and be able to continue their education despite the political unrest and all the different issues that they're having with the natural disasters. So we actually have a 12 to one student to professor ratio, which is awesome. I hear from many students, they're, they're more comfortable going into a classroom asking questions rather than if they were in a class with a um, hundred other people. The biggest classes I've seen on campus have about 24 students, the smallest have about four. And that really pertains to our personalization we have from the start of the application. So you'll be talking to an admission counselor who will reach out to you about your specific application. Then you'll actually move on to having an academic advisor who can help you really figure out exactly you would want to do. Let's say that you'd be interested in business and becoming a real estate um, a real estate broker as well. We actually do have a real estate program here and a workforce certificate as well as our business program. So you can go on to become a real estate agent in the future if you would want. And this personalization also leads to hands-on experience. Some of our biggest programs are our dental hygiene and our veterinary technology program. As you can see in the photo here, we have an on-campus dental clinic where our students actually work on patients from the community that they bring in. Our veterinary technology program is similar. People bring in their pets and they'll actually start working on them. We actually have a horse barn on campus they can work with too. We also have free tutoring and 24 seven security. We were actually voted the safest college in the United States for five years running until recently. We were beat out and we're now the second college. We also have free tuition. Now that is through Cengage, an online system where you would actually have access to your textbooks through our Canvas portal, which is our student, um, our, where students will access their different classrooms. We also have very easy access to public transportation. The 28 comes right up to our campus and we have free and ample parking in the center of campus. Students can actually keep their par cars on campus for free and freshmen park there as well. So these are some different fun facts about us I do like to share. So our application process is pretty simple. You can go on to our website or you can go on to the Common app. We would just need your official high school transcripts to give a decision. We do not have any SAT scores or ACT, ACT scores required or an essay requirement, except for certain programs where dental hygiene where it be part of the admissions process as it is a transfer program. And you can actually receive a decision within two weeks of a completed application here. So going on, we offer both associate degrees as well as bachelor's degrees. Some of our biggest programs are within psychology, business, as well as the health sciences, as I said, dental hygiene and veterinary technology. We also are very um, well-versed in early childhood education, as well as our engineering science, which is a program that we are definitely working on promoting as it gives you an introduction to all sorts of engineering before you would be able to go on and have more interest in aeronautical engineering. We do also have partnerships with other schools within our dual enrollment with nursing. So we actually have a two plus two program with LaSalle University, a college not too far away from us. So our first year, our students would take their prerequisites, which would be the classes like anatomy and physiology one and two, uh, chemistry and all those other nursing courses. Then the second year, they'd be able to go to LaSalle at a manor college price, and they would go on to the two years to get their BSN or their RN as well. And of course, we have bachelor degree programs as well. We actually started um, giving them about four years ago, and we had a program where our students that got associates could come back and receive their bachelor's degrees. As I mentioned, we do have a veterinary technology program. We also have a bachelor's degree in veterinary practice management. So after you earn your associates in veterinary technology, you can go on to learn how to open up your own management and run your own hospital or your own clinic if you wanna go on to do that. So you can also stack your credentials. So as I mentioned before, you can get a business degree while you're also working on getting your real estate license. We have some x-ray certification. So while you're working on getting your pre-nursing degree, you can always get an x-ray certification while you're in there. And those are through our workforce certificates. We definitely like to treat like they are minors that you can add on. We also have a three plus three law program that we partner with Widener University on 
where it's three years at Manor and then three years at um, Widener University as well. And you'll re receive guidance with an admissions counselor and with our career counselor from our center as a student here. You can actually see one of our horses on campus from our horse care team, which you can join the club on there as well. We also have an ambassador club where we have students come and give tours on campus. We have a rhetoric club, which focuses on community service as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do at a small university. So we do offer FAFSA and financial aid here. We also have financial aid counselors who you will team up with that will walk you through filling out your FAFSA. They can walk you through actually looking at your different loans and how that would affect your financial plan here. And we, of course, do have different ways you can file between October 1st and May 1st. And we actually do offer work study. Then you can adjust and deny items on your financial away award letter as well. And this is the basic tuition and fees. We actually are the most affordable private college in Pennsylvania. And a lot of our students, about 95% of them do get financial aid. We do also have different merit awards on our campus as well. So if you are interested in applying, I can definitely drop the link in the chat. We also have an open house coming up on October 16th. If you are in the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, I definitely ask that you can come out. I will drop that in the chat as well. And I hope everybody has a lovely night. All right, thank you so much, Manor College. We'll now have Providence College. Great, thank you so much everyone for joining us um, this evening. My name is Owen Bly, I'm from Providence College in Rhode Island. Um, and a few kind of facts on us, um, we are just, over 4,000 students. Um, we are a, a liberal arts college um, and Catholic Dominican division one. Um, and we'll go a little bit kind of more deeply into all of those, those items as we continue. Um, as I mentioned though, we are a liberal arts college and we're pretty traditional when it kind of comes to that, that liberal arts and real humanities based education. We have about, um, 52 different majors that students can choose from, but regardless of which one you're choosing, you're going to be taking a, a pretty traditional core that really spans across all of campus. So our chemistry majors are taking a philosophy class. Those who are studying finance are going to be taking a, a fine arts class. Another kind of point of distinction with us is that when you apply for admission, you are admitted to Providence not to the school of this, school of that, rather you're admitted to the college overall. So if you're undeclared, it's it's fine to switch into business. If you come in as a biochemistry major, but then decide that education is your thing, you can make that change too. We're a predominantly undergraduate institution. Um, we have just about 4,000 undergraduates and only a couple hundred grad students. So the emphasis here is really on undergrads and that comes into play, especially when it comes to research. Our faculty receive large grants to, to do research and they don't have grad students to choose from. So they, they have to pick undergrads and you'll find many of our students are, are published or present at conferences before they, they graduate. We're a Catholic college. We're the only college in the country that's run by the Dominican friars. Um, so there's about 50 friars who live on campus and about half teach, half in more administrative roles, but they do a lot to kind of build the, the sense of community around campus. Um, the Friars are definitely a big presence. Uh, about 60% of our students identify as Catholic. For, so for those students, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in campus ministry and service and, and really kind of grow in their faith. But also it's a, it's a community that's welcoming and, and supportive of the faith development of students of all different um, religious traditions. And so while we're, we're proud of that Catholic and Dominican background, it's, it's not something that's required of students. Um, and many students do still kind of feel feel welcome on our campus. Um, we're a campus that has been very quickly diversifying, um, and that could mean from a number of different standpoints, but we're proud one of our newest um, spaces on campus is actually the center at Moore Hall, which is a space that really kind of works to to help and foster a more inclusive um, community for all of our students. And so you can see a, a quick snapshot of one of the murals that we have in that space, but there's also spoken word cafes and dance studios and a number of other things um, available to our, our students as well. Um, 
one thing about Providence is our students, they almost care just as much about like the everything else as they do academics and, and in a really good way. Um, there's about 130 different clubs that students can get involved in. And I think you'll find our students are just as passionate about kind of the, the everything else as they are what they're, they're choosing to study. And so a real kind of campus community. Um, we draw students from across the country. So it's not the type of place where students are going home on the weekends, but instead students are really kind of fully immersing themselves in, in all that's, that's available to them. One part of that is our athletics. We're division one. We're actually um, the smallest school in a major athletic conference. And so I always like when you look at our student section and compare it to these schools with kind of tens of thousands of students and, and our student section relatively looks the same. So if you're looking for kind of a smaller school, but still that, that large kind of spirited atmosphere, it could be a good um, fit for you. Everyone plays on campus with the exception of the men's basketball program. They play at the arena in downtown Providence. If you're not quite a D1 athlete, plenty of other ways to kind of stay active. We have a pretty robust club sport program that competes regionally as well as intramurals with that within our campus as well. Final piece about kind of the college in general, we're, we're in the city of Providence, um, which is a huge asset for our students from a number of different standpoints. It's, it's a smaller big city um, and us specifically, we're about five minutes from downtown. So we have a very traditional campus feel and then you have the city right there. Um, it's great to have the city for internships and things like that, but also, as you can see, there's, there's eight colleges in Providence, so it has a younger kind of college town feel to it. Really kind of artsy, funky city, definitely has a, a lot of character to it as well. Um, as far as the admission process goes for us, it's, it's pretty straightforward around the common application, and that's the only application that we accept. You can see some of the main things that we're going to look at here, um, real kind of only work, I guess you could say, is we are test optional, although that's becoming more frequent. Um, but we have been test optional now for 15 years, so it's a, it's a big part of our process. What we're going to focus on is that high school work, so the, the strength of your curriculum, the grades that you have received, and that will be the bulk of our review in the context of a larger kind of holistic admission process. So that's a little bit of an intro into Providence, who we are as an institution, but if there's anything you're looking to learn more about or, or looking for a deeper dive on, certainly feel free to use that q and I'll drop my contact info in the chat. Thanks again for joining us and have a great evening. Thank you, Providence College. We'll now have St. Peter's University. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Ryan Britt and I am the uh, Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission here uh, at St. Peter's University. Um, <clears throat> I want to start off by apologizing. I'm a little, I feel a little under the weather today, so uh, excuse my annoying nasally, uh, nasally voice, but um, uh, yeah, let's begin. So I'm a recent uh, graduate of St. Peter's, maybe not so much recent anymore, but um, I was, uh, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 2015, uh, and I got my master's degree uh, well, not last year, in 2019 in cybersecurity. So I've been a member of the uh, St. Peter's community for over 10 years. Um, at the end of my uh, little uh, presentation for you guys, I'm going to leave my contact information with my cell phone number. So if you want to text me and ask me about my personal experience, please feel free. I welcome, you know, all those all those great conversations. Um, all right, so St. Peter's, we're a fairly small to mid-sized school. We have about uh, 3,600 total students, uh, average um about 2,800 of them are undergraduate. Um, are, we're located in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, we're right across the Hudson from New York City. Literally takes 12 minutes to uh, get from our campus to downtown Manhattan. Uh, so because of that, we have a lot of opportunities for internships. We, uh, we, we have over 650 different internship sites in the city alone. So there's a lot of opportunities for that. Um, we're also located right next to a major public transportation hub called Journal Square, a uh, big bus train station. You can pretty much get anywhere from there. So it's a very easily commutable school. About 49% of our students commute, about 51% live on campus. So it's about 50-50. Um, I'll talk about residence halls in a second. Um, yeah, but the average class size is about 22. Uh, that's more towards your core classes. Once you start getting into your major classes, it dwindles down to about like 15 being the average class size. Um, so you do get that individual care and personal attention and I think is so important uh, for college education and honestly you know all the Jesuit schools in this in this presentation are going to talk about the individual care and personal attention because that's really what um, what we strive for as as being a Jesuit community. 
Um, as far as academics go, we have over 50 different undergraduate majors. We have over 20 different minors that you can take. Any major you can take as a minor. Um, we have our own school of business, our own school of education, um, a school of nursing, and our College of Arts and Science, which houses the majority of our majors. Uh, some of the more popular majors within our College of Arts and Science are going to be um, the health science areas, um, especially biology. Um, and then we have like uh, computer science, uh, criminal justice, uh, philosophy, um, just to name a few. And then we also have a couple of really cool opportunities in the form of these five-year uh, dual degree programs. Uh, we have programs in, in a bunch of different areas, criminal justice, uh, education, MBA, um, computer science, cybersecurity, psychology, uh, where you can get your bachelor's and your master's degree in only five years. So there's just an extra year uh, you get your master's degree. Um, and we have about six different residence halls on campus. Um, there's three different styles. So uh, as a freshman, you're going to be in one of the freshman style buildings. Those are your traditional, you know, uh, five rooms in the hallway. We'll share, you know, share a bathroom. Uh, and then um, after freshman year, you have the option to either move to sophomore residence halls or uh, upperclassmen apartment style. So sophomore residence halls are really just two suites conjoined by a bathroom. Uh, and then the apartment style, we have two, four, and six person apartments. Um, a two person apartment would be a one bedroom, a uh, six person would be a three bedroom. So it's usually two people per room, uh, but that way you get your own living room, your own kitchen, your own bathroom, um, different things like that. Um, so uh, the application process is fairly simple, just like uh, a lot of the other schools have mentioned. Uh, it, we don't have any deadlines. We're, we're rolling a mission. Uh, we take applications, you know, even through the summer sometimes, which I don't recommend because it gets a little close. Um, but we don't have any deadlines. Uh, and we also take a holistic approach to um, reading applications. So, you know, we don't, if you have like a bad GPA or a bad SAT, we're not just gonna throw you in the deny pile. We're gonna take a look at if you've been involved in any clubs, sports, activities, uh, if you've done any community service, uh, what you read on your essay holds a lot of weight, what your teachers say about you and their letters of recommendation. You know, we take all that together uh, and we take it all that and weigh it together to uh, make a decision. Um, that being said, the average GPA we usually see is about a 3.3. Uh, average SAT is about an 1150, give or take. Um, but again, not minimums, just averages. We, uh, we actually don't have any minimums. Uh, every, everybody's read on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, as far as tuition goes, I know this is a hot topic. Um, don't be scared by this price. I got a lot to say about it. So our tuition is about 39,000 per year. Uh, it jumps up to about 55 if you're gonna live on campus. Honestly, that's about average for a private university, especially one that's uh, so close to the city, but it's still a huge number. We know that you know none of our students will ever even come close to paying the full price. Uh, that's because every single student gets a scholarship and our minimum scholarship right now is actually 20,000. So just for being accepted, you're guaranteed at least 20,000 to take that right off the price tag. And that's actually our minimum scholarship. Our highest is full tuition, our presidential. And there's a bunch in between. They're merit-based. So depending on your GPA and or your SATs, uh, determine the amount of uh, uh, money that you'll receive. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, we are test optional as well. Um, there are some programs, like if you're applying to the pre-professional, pre-med, pre-law, um, they require SATs, but pretty much everything else uh, does not require SATs. Um, so, so we are test optional. But so uh, we give you these merit scholarships, 20 minimum, full tuition highest. We accept any and all private scholarships that you get. And then finally, 98% of our students receive some kind of financial aid. And our average financial aid package is about uh, 24,000. So after everything we do end up being a very affordable school, uh, we actually start rivaling uh, state school prices. Um, so, and I usually share my story about my experience uh, about me choosing college. St. Peter's was the most expensive that I applied to out of all seven, ended up after the scholarships and financial aid being uh, the second cheapest school to actually attend. And that was um, the only other cheap one was actually community college. So I'm going to drop my information into the chat. Um, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to add my cell phone number on there. So if you guys want to text me, feel free. You know, I love texting students. Um, and I just want to say thank you for having me. Thank you, St. Peter's University. We'll now have John Carroll University. All righty. I am not the most technologically inclined or able person. So bear with me one second. Oh, this was so much easier before. Um, here we go. 
All right, everyone. My name is Allison Goldhammer, and I am here representing John Carroll University. I am our Associate Director of Enrollment. I'm so excited to have a chance to chat with you all tonight. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of John Carroll University, if you're not familiar with us, we are a uh, small to medium-sized liberal arts Jesuit Catholic University located in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. We're about 20 minutes east of downtown Cleveland, literally smack dab in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, we have about 2,700 or so undergraduate students and about 500 or so graduate students. Um, we offer over 70 different academic programs. Um, we are um, a school with 23 different varsity sports. We're NCAA Division III and members of the Ohio Athletic Conference, which we take a lot of pride in being a part of. We have over 100 different student organizations that sort of run the gamut of things that you can get involved in. Um, so a lot of different offerings for our students. Being a Jesuit institution, we do put a lot of emphasis on service and leadership. Um, so those are different aspects of our campus that you'll see sort of intertwined into our social uh, opportunities as well. Um, just to kind of share a little bit more about service last year, I guess I should say in our last normal year, um, our students logged over 146,000 hours of service. We have no service requirement on our campus, but that's something that our students just tend to be very passionate about and want to get involved in. Um, some of the signature programs that we're known for through our Bowler College of Business, we are definitely known for our accountancy program um, through our STEM fields, pre-health professions, obviously being so close to the Cleveland Clinic is a big draw for a lot of students. And then exercise science and sports studies are ones that um, Maybe we kind of fly under the radar for a little bit more, but we've recently become more nationally recognized specifically for our sports studies program. We actually are very fortunate. We have over or nearly 20 alumni that are currently working in the NFL, both in the front office and on the sidelines. Um, one in particular is the new head coach of the LA Chargers, Brandon Staley. So we've got a lot of fun representation, a nice little NFL pipeline, which is really, really cool for our students. Um, we also have a unique tie to NBC's Meet the Press, the former media for that. Um, Tim Russert was a John Carroll alum, um, and through our connection to him, um, unfortunately he has passed away, but through our connection with him, we we're able to have a fellowship offered to one student from John Carroll every year. They get to go spend nine months in D.C. working on NBC's Meet the Press. There are two offered every year. One is offered nationally across the country. Any student can apply for. One is only offered to our John Carroll students who are graduates of either our communication or poli side departments. That's a pretty cool opportunity. And then entrepreneurship is also a unique program that we offer and have a lot of students that have interest in. Um, just a couple of rankings that we recently received that I thought were nice to see. Um, we were rated number one best undergraduate teaching in Ohio, number four regionally for that, number two best regional university in the Midwest, and then number 22 best value in the Midwest by US News and World Report. So just a little chance to toot our own horn on that one. Um, as I mentioned, we are located only about 20 minutes east of downtown Cleveland. So Cleveland really becomes a great extension of our campus. Students have amazing opportunities to take on experiential learning opportunities there through internships and research opportunities with places like the Cleveland Clinic. We're very fortunate that over 500 companies in the greater, greater Cleveland area are either owned or operated by John Carroll alumni. And some of them are pretty big name companies, places like Goodyear Tires and Rubber, um, Sherwin-Williams, Duck Brands, which is the company that owns Duct Tape. Um, Cleveland's also an amazing cultural hub with places like Playhouse Square, that's the third largest theater arts district outside of New York City. Through something on campus called the Kulas Grant, students can actually go see shows in Playhouse Square for free. We're home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is a nice uh, kind of cool thing to, to have a claim of fa uh, fame for, and some other unique things, professional sports teams that fortunately are now starting to win things. Uh, it wasn't something we were able to, to say for a while, um, but now we take a lot of pride in that. Um, and our students get this best of both worlds scenario when they're on our campus. They get that kind of su uh, suburban college town vibe, but they also get to experience all that a big city has to offer without maybe having to commit to living in that setting. So one of the unique things about John Carroll, I think, is actually the model that we offer to students that are going through their college search. Um, we really strive for personalized and individualized attention throughout your whole college experience. So not just in the admission process, but once you get to our campus. But we really do start um, setting that tone with the way our office works. So every student is assigned an enrollment manager who is your main point of contact through every step in the process. So we work with you from application to admission, from scholarship to financial aid. So you have that one person you go to with any questions to really help you feel comfortable and confident as you proceed through this process. Because we know it can be a little bit overwhelming and we're really here to try to make it a pleasant and, and you know positive experience for you. 
Um, so just a couple of things that we want to make sure students are aware of as they're going through this process. Um, we do have some admission deadlines that we do try to stick to. We are a Common App exclusive school, so trying to, to make that a little bit easier for our students. December 1 is our early action deadline, so a non-binding deadline. But basically what it means is if you apply by December 1, uh, you will have a decision from us by the third week of December. That is also the deadline that puts you in the best position for maximum scholarship consideration. We do have some programs that require you to meet that deadline um, before you can even apply for some of those scholarship opportunities. So um, definitely one that you want to put on those calendars after December 1. You're still fully considered for all of our merit-based scholarship opportunities. We start releasing decisions um, really on about a two-week rolling basis. Um, when you apply to John Carroll, you are automatically be going to be considered for our merit-based scholarships, which go all the way up to $27,000. $27,000 a year. They automatically renew every year, which is really helpful for your four-year planning purposes. Students who attend a Jesuit, a Catholic, or a Cristo Rey High School are eligible to apply for our Ignatian Heritage Scholarship, which is top prize of a full tuition scholarship. And then there's also additional um, academic and endowed scholarships available. We do have visits coming up this fall. Uh, we have our general open house on Saturday. And then on November 6th, we're offering our Bowler College of Business and STEM open houses as well. We're also open Monday through Friday and most Saturdays for campus tours. And then we also offer personalized visits um, for our seniors. Um, I do have some contact information listed here. I'll also throw it in the chat, but I hope you guys reach out so you can learn a little bit more about John Carroll University. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Thank you, John Carroll University. Um, last but not least, for Sacred Heart University. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Wade Hyatt. I'm one of our associate directors here at Sacred Heart University, located in Fairfield, Connecticut. So Sacred Heart University has uh, over six majors that you or six colleges that you can study in at SHU. In these six colleges, we have over 80 majors, so plenty of options, including undecided option. Our first college is going to be that of the College of Arts and Sciences, which does have our two sub colleges, uh, SCMA, the School of Communication, Media and the Arts, and the School of Social Work. In the College of Arts and Sciences, outside of those sub colleges, the most popular programs we're looking at are definitely going to be biology, psych, criminal justice. Our second college is that of the Isabel Farrington College of Education for anyone who wants to become a teacher. This is a five-year program. Five-year program, you get a bachelor's and a master's, and there's two options here for either uh, early education or secondary ed. Our third college at SHU is going to be that of the Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which houses our school of computer science and engineering as well. This college is uh, accredited AACSB, where we are a top 5% business school in the nation, constantly updating our curriculum, faculty, and buildings. Our next pro, uh, college is that of the Davidson Henley, Henley College of Nursing, which I'll get into in a minute, as well as the College of Health Professions and St. Vincent's College, which houses our associates and certificate level programs. There is the option to continue your career with our master's and doctoral level programs at SHU. And the biggest thing that I tell everybody is class size, class size, class size. At SHU, at Sacred Heart, your average class size is 21 students, the teacher ratio of 14 to one. Your biggest class is gonna be upwards of 27, 28 students. So there are no lecture halls. You're not gonna get lost in the crowd, anything like that. Our College of Health Professions only has three programs for the undergrad. You have our communication disorders, which is for students to matriculate to our speech and language pathology program. Then we also have exercise science and health science, which is used for students to matriculate to any of our other graduate level programs or our doctorate level program of physical therapy. Physical therapy completed in either six or seven years, where the difference will be in the undergrad you completed after your junior year or your senior year. And the programs above that have an asterisk are the same, uh, are in the same boat, except instead of a six or seven year program, they're a five or six year program. All right. So the College of Nursing, which is our most competitive college and even program at Sacred Heart, is a direct entry four year program, higher average GPA and test scores. We do have a state-of-the-art simulation suite in the Center for Healthcare Education. And your clinicals will begin sophomore year, year two. Across the street from Sacred Heart, we do have a nursing home as well as rehab center. So students get their feet wet there before they're thrown into the whole hospital setting. There is nursing specific study abroad experiences. In the NCLEX, which is the standardized test you have to pass to become a registered nurse. Uh, we did have, uh, as of the last year that graduated in 2020, we did have a 99% pass rate. 100% uh, of our students pass taking it more than once, but 99% pass within taking it the first time. 
Uh, there are options to continue your career here as well with a master's and doctoral level programs too. All right, so the Center for Career and Professional Development, so you know what it's all about, getting a job. Uh, these services begin as early as your first day of freshman year. They get you to go from uh, campus to career, backpack to briefcase, whether it's you know resume writing workshops, LinkedIn workshops, alumni job shadowing, our job portal of Handshake, which has over 700 internships posted and more and more posted every day, mostly by Sacred Heart uh, alumni. So they're really there to help you get that foot in the door, which is nice. And if you're undecided, that's fine. We do have the Discover You program, which will help work with you to kind of finalize, hopefully by sophomore year, what you're passionate about. And we do have a 99% placement rating for full-time employment or graduate study placement within one year of graduation. Here are a few of our most recent internships and outcomes. As you can see, Vineyard Vines, WWE, Google, MDM, so on. All right, so outside of academics, uh, we do have over 60 clubs and organizations, student governments big, as well as our academic clubs. If you need extra help for any classes, research, projects. We do have Greek life, so we do have 13 fraternity and sorority life organizations. We are also uh, a division one school. We have 33 D1 sports. We have everything you can imagine from your football, basketball, baseball, soccer, to even like equestrian, golf, tennis, fencing, bowling, whatever it is, you name it, we have it. Um, there's always something to go to with your friends during the week, uh, hang out, socialize, whatever it may be. But if you're not a division one athlete, that's fine. Myself, I wasn't. Uh, we do have club sports options where you do still travel and compete against local colleges, as well as the intramurals option, which is a step down from there too. Performing arts, we have your band, your choir, your dance, theater. Uh, there are grants available for these programs. We also have campus ministry and multicultural organizations. Here's our Center for Healthcare Education, where our nursing and health profession students take their courses. Fairly new building. Uh, everything is state of the art from the classrooms to simulated mannequins that are bleeding, screaming, crying, pulse, blood pressure, heartbeat, all that good stuff. And then here's our West Campus, which is where our College of Education is, as well as the um, College of Business. As you can see in that left picture, you have the two classroom buildings on the left, and then you have kind of that glass building on the right of the left picture. That's actually our hotel on campus for students involved in the um, hospitality and tourism management program. They get their feet wet here before they start their internships. And then coming soon, uh, 2023 Martiri Family Arena for all the hockey fans. All right. And finally, applying to SHU, you know, what we're looking for. So yeah, we are looking for your transcript. We do want to see a well-balanced student inside the classroom. We want to see you challenging yourself all four years. Uh, our average GPA is about a 3.4. If you're interested in our nursing program, as I mentioned before, a little more competitive, it's closer to a 3.7. We are test optional, so we do not require your SAT or ACT. One of those things where it can't hurt you, it can only help you. Otherwise, besides that, letters of rec, your college essay, and then demonstrated interest. The only other piece that really plays a role is an interview. The interview is a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one with admissions counselor responsible for reading your application and working with your market of students. It's a chance to kind of explain yourself, go over your application, get questions answered, a little more comfortable experience. We can also direct you to faculty and students in your program so you can kind of pick their brain as well. All right, and that is Sacred Heart in a nutshell. Uh, so let's stop sharing. Perfect. If everyone could join me back with your cameras, we're going to have a quick Q&A before we, um, <clears throat> we end today's session. So, um, Fran Yu, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I think my number one piece of advice for anyone going through the college search process is to look at everybody. Don't just look at the school that you are most excited about. Personally, I had five top colleges and I didn't even apply to the college that I went to until the spring of my senior year. I really wish I'd had more opportunities, visited more colleges, and really got to experience that. Thank you. Manor College, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? One thing I want students to remember about our school is we're a perfect school if you're one of those students that, wants, that knows colleges for you but isn't sure what you're interested in. We actually have a bachelor's of liberal arts 
that allows you to get a touch of philosophy, a touch of English and communication, and even how to think about the world, which is really applicable to any job that is out there. And we also have those different options for students who know exactly what they wanna do within the dental hygiene or veterinary technology world, or even nursing. And even pre-law, they know, look, I wanna be a lawyer. And we have those programs that can help you get what you need at Manor and then move on to those other schools as well. Thank you. Providence College, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, I think one thing that, that students often kind of assume is that their, their transcript and their um, academic credentials are, are just looked at quickly and that a number can kind of either get them in or, or keep them from being admitted. Um, and I would encourage you to kind of think more, more broadly about the different ways that we are kind of considering academic performance. That could include things like progression, students who are doing their best work in their senior year and maybe had a rough start to their, their high school. Or with test scores, they are kind of one piece of information, but as more and more institutions are going test optional, I think they're they're playing a supporting role and not necessarily something that is um, that is a deal breaker. And so I think one of the big myths is that there's just kind of one number that either gets you in or keeps you out, but rather just know that there's a, a lot that goes into our process. All right, John Carroll, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, I think one thing I want students to really take away um, from learning about John Carroll is that, um, we really care for you as a student. Um, we are a little bit of a smaller school, so you're, you get a very um, nurtured experience. I think it was Ryan from St. Peter's that mentioned that idea of care personalis, um, sort of that care for the whole person mindset. And that's something that um, I think really gives a lot of students comfort as they're making that transition from high school to college. Um, but even though you have that small school experience, you do still have those big city opportunities. So our students really get this amazing balance of that small school experience, but with those big world um, opportunities and advantages. So I would say that that's, that's one thing that I think a lot of our students take away from their John Carroll experience um, is that personalized attention, but then getting those, those big name jobs after their time at Carroll. All right, and St. Peter, uh, sorry, <laughs> Sacred Heart University, uh, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Sure, so one myth kind of piggybacking off of uh, Providence College here, is the fact that one or two grades may hold you out from you know your dream school or the school that you're really trying to get into. Um, what I mean by this is that when you're freshman, your freshman year, maybe you do get a C, two Cs. As long as you're able to progress and kind of work your way out to kind of figure it out, sophomore, junior, and senior year, as long as that slope of grades is going up instead of down, uh, we understand and it does play a role in the holistic approach that we do take admissions wise. We do understand that your freshman year, you are 14 years old. And so we do take that into consideration as well. Like I said, as long as one or two grades, maybe a little low, as long as you're able to kind of figure it out as you do progress through your academic career in high school, we take everything into consideration, not just how you did freshman year. So I want to thank you all for being here as panelists and thank you all for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a, a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash NCCAA. Thank you so much. Have a great one.